When can you make a phone call or even a FaceTime to space? Hello, all of you Ibblers, and welcome to Ibblebits Extended. My name is Cliff, and today we have an answer to a question I'm sure all of you are thinking about. This week it was announced that the Nokia Corporation won a NASA contract to establish the first ever cellular network on a lunar surface, and we were wondering what that actually means. To answer that question, we must begin with the Artemis program, which is a lunar exploration program launched in 2017 by the US government that has the goal of landing the first woman and next man on the moon by the end of 2024. And by the end of 2028, which is only eight years away, they are looking to establish sustainable missions to Mars. But you might be asking, where did the name Artemis come from? It turns out it comes from Greek mythology, and Artemis was the Greek goddess of wild animals, hunting, chastity, and of all things, the moon. So with the persona of Artemis, we shall be off to the moon. But why do we want to go there in the first place? It's not like they have nice weather. Temps on the moon range from 250 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and down to negative 208 at night. This is not gonna cut it. The goal behind the program is to ultimately learn the obstacles that space presents to humans and overcome them in order to eventually reach Mars. It's basically a practice game to eventually make it to the red planet, which I still don't get why we want to do that so badly. But many people see this as being an exploration into the unknown, like crossing the oceans before anyone else did it. Going to Mars is a lot further than going to the moon. Did you know that it only takes three days and 2,400,000 miles to get to the moon? To get to Mars is 140 million miles and a six month mission. It's been a while since anyone has touched foot on the moon actually 48 years to be exact. And this time, the technology getting us there is a lot better. The astronauts will be flying to the moon in the Orion spacecraft, which is built into three parts, the crew module, the service module, and a launch abort system. On July 2nd, 2019, NASA successfully demonstrated the Orion spacecraft's launch abort system can outrun a speeding rocket and pull astronauts to safety during a launch emergency. Now that you know more about the Artemis program, it's time to get to your main question. When can you FaceTime with someone on the moon? NASA has a $370 million plan to deploy technologies on the moon that will allow for a sustained human presence. This includes things like remote power generation, cryogenic freezing, robotics, safer landing, and 4G. Bell Labs, which is owned by Nokia, the maker of the banana phone in the late 90s, won a grant of $14.1 million to build out that 4G LTE network on the moon. So why is a cellular network so important on the moon? For the same reasons that it's important on Earth. We can communicate faster and more reliably. We can achieve more tasks, control lunar rovers, create maps on the moon, live stream video, and even have conversations on IBL. Lunar 4G will look a little different than Earth's 4G system. Typical 4G towers stand around 50 to 200 feet tall, which is a little too large to fit on a spacecraft to the moon. To fix this problem, Nokia system will be more compact and energy efficient. The crazy part about this system is that it could work better than the one on Earth. Due to the fact that the moon doesn't have any trees or buildings, the signals will travel easier. So we've come a long way since 1972. At that time, Westinghouse was contracted to make the first lunar TV camera, which had to send video via a USB signal through an antenna to a tracking station in Australia convert it to a standard broadcast signal that then got sent to a satellite which was received back in Houston where it was finally broadcast live. What happened? The 4G LTE network is expected to be completed in late 2022 and the plan is to eventually upgrade to 5G. Although it might be a while before you can actually call Aunt Becky from space, efforts are being made to make humans a multi-planetary species. So this begs the question, would you want to live on the moon or Mars? I'm not shopping real estate anywhere that doesn't have access to a Starbucks. So that's all from today's episode of Able Bits Extended. If you like this episode, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And if you're interested in quickly catching up on what's happening in the world, make sure to check out Able Bits. My name is Cliff. Until next time, we'll see you later.